I don't know how you beat a Gulf sunset with those squadrons of pelicans flying past. And of course, a breeze coming off the Gulf and your toes sinking into that soft white sand. I'm Robin Sessingham, and this is The Zest. Citrus, seafood, Spanish flavor, and Southern charm. We're all about food in Florida. Maybe you're lucky enough to be staying at the beach all summer. Or maybe like me, right now you're just dreaming about the sea breezes and the sunsets. Either way, we've got the ultimate beach house menu and it will take you to the coast. Support for the Zest Podcast comes from Seitenbacher brand natural foods like muesli cereals, oils, oatmeal, energy bars, gluten-free fruit gummies for the kids, organic coffee, and more. Available in supermarkets, health food stores, or online at seitenbacher.com. I wanted to make sure that you know about stpetersburgfoodies.com. If you're looking for fun and good food in St. Pete, there are restaurant reviews and podcasts featuring local chefs, restaurateurs, happy hour suggestions, and a lot more. It's all online at stpetersburgfoodies.com. What's the perfect beach house menu? Nothing fancy, nothing complicated, but you'd want it to be good enough to share with friends. For ideas, I talked to Mary Kay Andrews, a prolific novelist who grew up in St. Petersburg and whose more recent books have names like Summer Rental, Beach Town, and Sunset Beach. And last year, she came out with The Beach House Cookbook, Easy Breezy Recipes with a Southern Accent. Mary Kay Andrews, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Robin. I want to know what is the ultimate beach house menu. So you also describe your beach house on Tybee Island in Georgia. I'm dying for an invitation. I think that's what your plan was. People read this and thought, how can I become friends with Mary Kay Andrews? (laughs) Uh, Well, that's, you know, ultimately my evil plan. But, you know, part of my (laughs) evil plan, too, is to, uh, even if you don't cook, to, uh, and I know lots of people tell me they don't cook. They just like to read cookbooks um, because it puts them in a good mood. Uh, You know, so many of our memories have to do with food and friendship and family and hospitality. So that was really the aim of the, of the cookbook, to share um, some good memories and some good menus and some good recipes. Yeah, because each recipe has a little, you gave a little story or a little description at the beginning yeah. of it, and it does put you there. So let's say that I wrangled an invitation to Mary Kay Andrews' beach house on Tybee Island. What would be the menu how what would we let's say we start off with a cocktail yeah uh sandbar sangria sounds like a good plan it's summertime um and we don't want anything too heavy so sandbar sangria is really just uh, a good bottle of dry rosé wine chilled and i slice in some peaches and some strawberry and then add um some seltzer for a little bit of bubbly and you know i've got uh got mint growing in the little uh, herb gardens around ebb tide so we drop in some sprigs of mints and we would uh sit out on the deck and uh listen to the ocean oh sounds good you make it so you can make that by the pitcher then yes you can make it by the pitcher or you can make it by the glass now one thing it seems like you're going for here i mean let's be honest when we're at a beach house it's hot outside. A lot of times it's hectic. You got a lot of people running around. You've got guests. You want to be with your guests. You don't want to be stuck in the kitchen cooking. And that's kind of your idea, I think, uh, in yeah. your recipes. They're they're kind of no fuss, stress free sorts of recipes. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, when I'm at the beach, we ha- we do have a grocery store on Tybee. We have the IGA, and in the summertime, especially during tourist season, it's well stocked with fresh produce and actually really good seafood and meat and a, and a, a good little deli. Um, but you know, we don't. The IGA doesn't carry um, creme fresh, <laughs> right? So you're not going to find. You know, might find some recipes with some sour cream, but there ain't no creme fresh and there ain't no. Um, 
there ain't nothing fussy. So, mm. I, I, you know, not fussy recipes, simple, good food, seasonal. Um, you know, my we have a garden here at our house in Atlanta. My husband just picked his first crop of zucchini yesterday. And um, pretty soon we'll be dropping zucchini on the doorsteps of unsuspecting neighbors. But tonight, I think, to put me in the beach house mood, I might make um, this great zucchini vichyssoise recipe that I came up with um, for the beach house cookbook. And that's a fancy way. Vichyssoise sounds fancy, but it's not really. It's just uh, cold soup that you make with leeks and garlic and some um, potatoes and, of course, uh, a couple of zucchini and some um, chicken broth and some chives. And then you, you make it, you blend it together. I have one of those um, handheld immersers, uh, blend it up and put it in the fridge uh, so it can start chilling. And that makes a really nice, um, cooling, fresh um, first course. And another thing is you can put it in the fridge and it holds. That's another thing that you want in a beach house menu. You want things that don't need to be served right away. It's just great if you can make things ahead or put them in the fridge or leave them out until right. you're ready to eat. Yeah. I mean, uh, the marinated shrimp uh, recipe from the cookbook is another good example of that. Shrimp is in season. I know it's in season down on the Gulf. It's in, and it's in season on Tybee. So we do a simple marinated shrimp. Um, we don't, we don't like farm raised shrimp. Um, we love those gorgeous local shrimp, uh, Gulf shrimp, and you steam them lightly and marinate them in um, apple cider vinegar and some herbs and some fresh citrus juice, preferably lime, um, some uh, purple onion, some red or yellow pepper, and uh, do that earlier in the day, in the cool of the day, and um, come evening or lunchtime. You've got a great um, refest. And, you know, that can be a main dish as well as a starter. Um, we like it over just chopped greens. It can be a main dish. And I was thinking that's something I always like to bring to a party. Yes. Every, uh, yeah. You have to, you make twice as much as you think you can use. And you're still going to come home with an empty bowl. You're from St. Pete. And, you know, I didn't realize till I read your cookbook, your mother had a restaurant. Yeah, yeah. She had a, a boarding house style restaurant for a few years. It was in the old Bond Hotel in downtown St. Pete. It was called Mrs. Hogan's Dining Room. And she ran it with my two brothers. And it was a labor of love. She loved, you know, I came from a family, a big family, five kids. And uh, there were always cousins around. And she loved feeding a crowd. So um, she really loved that restaurant. And it was so was it, it I'm sorry. So was it like... Um... Snowbirds would come down and stay. Uh, it was snowbirds. It was locals. Um, it was in the Bond Hotel was an old timey retirement hotel. And mm -hmm. it's actually a, a boutique hotel now. And I've actually stayed there. I can't think of the name of it. It's right downtown in St. Pete. But yeah, the, lots of the residents, you know, so there a lot of them were retired snowbirds. But uh, after the word got out, locals would come because it was, you know, it was all you could eat. So uh, you know, fried chicken and pork roast and pork, uh, pot roast was her, one of her big specialties and um, uh, macaroni and cheese, fresh vegetables, green beans, um, corn, um, that kind of stuff. It sounds wonderful. And she based it on that place in Savannah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she based it on Mrs. Wilkes dining room. We, my mm -hmm. husband and I moved to Savannah as newlyweds. And when she and my dad came to visit, we took them there and she just fell in love with the concept of people coming in and sitting down at a communal table. And so strangers would be sitting elbow to elbow. And she loved that idea. And so she had a lot of fun with it. All right. So we've had our cocktail. We've had our first course. What are you going to serve us for the entree? Well, now that depends on whether or not my husband's caught any fish that day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, my husband is an avid fisherman. He keeps a boat uh, on Tybee. And if he and my son have been out fishing and if they've caught any trout or flounder or redfish, um, he might make his famous fish bites, which just are fish chunks that he breads and panko and breadcrumbs and, and flash fries. And so that gets served with a cocktail sauce that has a lot of horseradish and a lot of uh, lemon juice and some um, tomato paste. We might um, 
if the timing was right, we might have we might have a low country boil. Now that's a Savannah specialty. I never had that until we moved to Savannah, but that's simply um, crab, shrimp, sausage, um, and corn cut up and steamed all together uh, with a bunch of uh, with a can of beer and some old bay seasoning and some limes. Oh, and some little red potatoes. So, and that you 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 cook it together. And you dump it out on the table and everybody just peels and eats. You know, so ideally, right, you ca- catch the fish yourself or you catch the crab yourself. But yeah. um, you, you can also, if you can buy it fresh in the store. Yeah, yeah. Especially, I mean, there's the, the great thing about uh, today is that you really can usually find a, a decent seafood market in a grocery store. Um So, and I know, especially in Florida, you should be able to get fresh seafood year round. He also might take those fish bites and put them in a, in a fish taco. And the fish taco is, is the little fish bites and, um, with some avocado and some slaw slapped between a uh, soft corn tortilla. You know, if the fish aren't biting, we might fry chicken, um, and with that, what we do is we take the chicken and we um, put it in a brine overnight. And the brine is um, buttermilk and hot sauce. Yeah. And uh, let that um, brine overnight. And in the morning, you um, let it dry a little bit and dip it in uh, breadcrumbs, panko, and maybe some Parmesan cheese and, and fry it up. But that... The spiciness carries over? Not a ton. I mean, I'm not really a really spicy food person. It just gives a little bit of a kick. Um, And you can absolutely adjust the seasonings to to the crowd around your table. And um, the crowd around my table is half, half spicy and half not. So the buttermilk mixture isn't really too spicy at all. Mm-hmm. But and then we would serve probably with potato salad. Um, I call it Edna's potato salad, my grandmother's recipe, which is, you know, hard boiled eggs, potatoes, um, chopped onion and celery uh, dressed with mayonnaise and um, some mustard and some pickle relish, sweet pickle relish. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the traditional the traditional recipe, the one yeah, everybody loves. Oh, yeah, this might, yeah, very traditional. Nothing newfangled or fussy about it. And then, you know, um, hopefully in that morning, you, you boiled some eggs while you were scrambling eggs and um, maybe devil some eggs and put those, put the deviled eggs on top of the potato salad so you look real fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's go on to dessert. I can't oh, hardly favorite. wait. <laughs> my favorite too. What what would you pick? Well, my kids, since they were little, uh, we used to go to Grayton Beach in the Panhandle when my kids were in oh, school. So beautiful there. Yeah, with several other families on 30A. And um, because we were on vacation, you know, they demanded dessert. And nobody wants to be in the kitchen baking when you're a lot when you're on vacation. So I came up with, and this is a variation of lots of recipes I had seen online. So you get a, um, like a nine by 12. And I honestly, I just use a, a, a foil pan that I buy at the store. Uh, you buy a box of ice cream sandwiches, <laughs> you take them out of the wrappers, um, layer them in the bottom of the um, disposable aluminum pan, poke holes in the sandwiches uh, with the end of a wooden spoon. Now, this is highly technical stuff here. Um, (laughs) And then drizzle over it um, hot fudge sauce and um, caramel or butterscotch (laughs) sauce. Mm -hmm. Drizzle that over it kind of artistically. Then you slather that with a layer of oh god help me cool whip (laughs) (laughs) um this is so simple you know and we do let you know when the kids are like five years old you can start they can start making this dessert which we by the way call trailer trash oh you do (laughs) (laughs) so you then slather the ice cream sandwiches with um the cool whip or the whip topping of your choice. You could, of course, use real whipped cream if you were trying to be uptown. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And then you drizzle more uh, fudge sauce and more butterscotch sauce over that. And then the piece de resistance is crushed up Heath bar bits. (laughs) I laugh because it's like there's this is not over the top at all, right? No, it's not. It's not gilding the <laughs> trashy lily at all. And then you you um you stick that in, you cover it, stick it in the freezer. Mm-hmm. Um, if they will let you, you could let it freeze for another hour, but you can actually read it eat it right away. And um, it's one of those great it's one of those great things that mm-hmm. it's a guilty thing, you know. You you look up and there's an adult sneaking into the kitchen to see if there's a last slice of trailer trash in the freezer. <laughs> it's a guilty pleasure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Or the other thing I like to do is uh, frozen key lime bar, key lime pie bars. Mm. And, um, you know, you're basically going to make um, a key lime pie kind of a deal in popsicle form. And um, when you pull it out of the popsicle molds, sprinkle it with some graham cracker, crushed up graham cracker crumbs. Mm -hmm. So, and that's another, you know, it's, it's a fun, easy, light, um, refreshing dessert to have at the beach. I'll tell you something that caught my eye that looked super easy, but gorgeous was the frozen lemon granita that you put inside the, the lemon peels. Yeah. Yeah. You just, um, and you know, it's it, for once you're going to be happy if you have an old timey aluminum ice cube tray mm. to make it in. But you you um, cook down um, lemon juice and sugar, and you know maybe some um, lemon balm or some mint, and um, you freeze that and in a in a tray. And every so often you pull it out of the freezer and you scrape it. So it's not going to get into a hard cake. You're going to be scraping it so that it's semi soft. And then you're going to when you squeeze the lemons, you're going to um, save those lemon halves and serve it in the hollowed out um, lemon halves. Well, that sounds like a wonderful dinner and very beachy. So let me ask you, Mary Kay. So you you didn't get very far. Tybee Island is just not too far from the Florida border. But what do you miss about Florida? Oh, what are uh, sunsets? Gulf sunsets. Yeah. Um, there's just no sun. If you're a Gulf girl, and I am, there's no sunset like a Gulf sunset with that turquoise water. Um, we get beautiful sunrises because we're on the Atlantic uh, at Tybee. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you go over to the marsh side of the island, there are beautiful sunsets. But I don't, I don't know how you beat um, a Gulf sunset with those squadrons of pelicans flying past, and of course, um, a breeze coming off the Gulf, and your toes sinking into that soft white sand. Uh, maybe you'll see a dolphin chasing bait in the shallows, and. Uh, you hang around, you got a cold drink in your hand, and you hang around to see the gold, the green flash. Mary Kay, it sounds like a book. <laughs> <laughs> you well, might be good at this. Last year's book, which was actually called Sunset Beach. <laughs> That's right, Sunset Beach and set in St. Petersburg. Yeah, and but you have a newer one, right? Yeah, this summer's book uh, just came out at the beginning of May. It's called Hello Summer. And again, it's set, this one's set in a fictional town in the Florida panhandle. It's mm-hmm. kind of the town that time forgot. It's on the Gulf. It's a quiet little town um, struggling to survive. And my protagonist um, takes a job working for her family's struggling weekly newspaper. And you were a reporter. I was. I started, actually, I started my newspaper career um, working as a stringer for the now defunct St. Pete Evening Independent. And then... I also worked one summer for the also now defunct Clearwater Sun, which was an evening paper in Clearwater, which is long gone. But I I swear I didn't put them out of business. Do you get a book out every summer? I do. Wow. Thank you, Mary Kay. Appreciate it. My pleasure. That was novelist Mary Kay Andrews. We have all the recipes that we talked about on our website, thezestpodcast.com. 
Thanks so much for listening. You can also connect with us on our Facebook page or on Instagram at The Zest Podcast. I'm Robin Sussingham. Delia Colon and I produce The Zest with help from Cheyenne Jacklell and Mark Hayes. Copyright 2020, WUSF Public Media.